So thanks to our last theorem, we now know that if a set of vectors is orthogonal, then we can automatically conclude that the vectors in this set are also linearly independent. This is an amazing statement. Pause for a cause and compare this new approach with the work that we need to establish linear independence amongst vectors directly. This new theorem is an awesome shortcut. And we really start to see the benefits of this new theorem with the following definition for an orthogonal basis. So an orthogonal basis for a subspace W of Rn is a basis of W that is an orthogonal set. So to better appreciate this theorem and the definition of an orthogonal basis, let's explore this idea with the following example. Show that the given vectors form an orthogonal basis for R3. So the first thing that we need to do here is show that the set of vectors v sub 1, v sub 2, v sub 3 form an orthogonal set. So in other words, we need to show that all pairs of distinct vectors in this set are orthogonal to each other. So we have our three cases. Case 1, we are checking the dot product of vector v sub 1 with vector v sub 2. So vector v sub 1 is negative 3, 1, 2. And we are dotting this with the vector with components 2, 4, 1. So computing the dot product, we have negative 6 plus 4 plus 2, which gives us 0. Our second case, we have vector v sub 1 dotted with vector v sub 3. So vector v sub 1 has the components negative 3, 1, 2. And we are dotting this with the vector with components 1, negative 1, 2. And computing this dot product, we have negative 3 minus 1 plus 4, which again gives us 0. And last but not least, we are taking the dot product of vector v sub 2 with vector v sub 3. So vector v sub 2 has the components 2, 1, 4. And we are dotting this with the vector with components 1, negative 1, 2. So computing the dot product, we have 2 minus 4 plus 2, which is equal to 0. Woohoo! So we have shown that all distinct pairs of vectors in this set are orthogonal. And so we can conclude that, therefore, the set of vectors v sub 1, v sub 2, v sub 3 is an orthogonal set. Now, since this is an orthogonal set of vectors, we know that this automatically implies that this set of vectors is linearly independent. So we can say that vector v sub 1, vector v sub 2, vector v sub 3 are orthogonal and linearly independent. Now, since any three linearly independent vectors in R3 form a basis in R3, it automatically follows that the set of vectors, vector v sub 1, vector v sub 2, vector v sub 3, are orthogonal set of three linearly independent vectors forms an orthogonal basis for R3. making this our beautiful final answer and also providing us with a nice demonstration of the power of our last theorem. 